Hey everyone, this is Gwen and I am here with the So Jam video. I had this idea to make a purse in my head and I decided to just wing it and this is how it went. So, after making the black and white gingham coordinating set, I decided to make something with the remaining fabrics that I have from the projects. I don't like having remnant fabrics lying around and I like to make small accessories to complete my coordinated look. Last year it was easy because I just made fabric masks as my accessory, then I started making hats and now I want to try something different. I figured it's time for me to finally use this um slightly rusty back frame that's been sitting in my sewing stash for too many years. The key design feature for this bag is the pink rose motif that is part of the border print of the gingham fabric. I also wanted to take this chance to practice doing applique work on my sewing. To create contrast, I decided to place the pink rose motif on the black satin fabric and to use the gingham fabric as the base for the bag. On top of having the pink rose motif, I also wanted ruching on the frame of the bag. And to achieve that look, I multiplied the length of the frame by 2 and cut out the black satin fabric with that width plus a little extra for seam allowance. To be specific, the length of the frame I'm using is about 4 inches, so I cut out a piece of fabric that is 9 inches wide and 8 inches long. To put the bag together, I started by sewing the gingham base to the black satin fabric. Then I attached the pink rose motif to the black satin fabric using teeny tiny zigzag stitches on my machine. Actually, before attaching the pink rose motif to the black satin, I tried to be clever and used adhesive hem tape to stick the motif to the black satin. Well, it didn't work so well, so I won't be recommending doing that. I think the black satin is just too smooth and the adhesive just didn't hold. After slowly and carefully sewing the pink rose motif to the black satin fabric, I realized that I made the mistake of not adding interfacing. And because of that, there was some puckering in the fabric. And naturally, I had to do it all over again, but this time with interfacing on the wrong side, that covered the entire area of the pink rose motif. After sewing the pink rose motif onto the main fabric, I trimmed off the excess interfacing and cleaned up the other additional fabric of that rose fabric that was peeking beyond the applique stitches. Hey, looks so much better than the first try, huh? Then I sewed the front and back pieces of the back together along the bottom seam. At this point, I decided that I wanted to add a lining to the bag. So I dug out a dress that's been sitting in my refashion pile and took out the champagne satin lining to use as a lining for the bag. I cut out the size I needed for the lining and sewed the side seams of the main back piece and the lining piece together separately. But before sewing the side seams of the main back piece together, I measured and marked out where I would need to stop stitching with the pin. This is the width that's needed to make a little casing to insert the back frame later. Next, I added box corners to the bottom of the main back piece. To do that, I first folded the corner of the bag by aligning the side seam and the bottom seam right sides together. Then I measured about 1 inch from the pointed corner and then sewed a horizontal line across. Ta-da! When I was happy with how the box corners turned out, I snipped off the corners to reduce bulk in the bag. I repeated the same process of sewing boxed corners to the lining piece as well. At this stage, I also decided to finish the raw edges of the main back piece with small zigzag stitches because ugh, I really hated this black satin because it was just fraying so quickly and easily. And now get ready for my explanation of how I put the lining and the main back pieces together. Basically, 
they have to be put together wrong sides together. To create a clean opening at the top, I folded the top of the lining down towards the wrong side. And then I placed it inside the main back piece. And then I folded the top portion of the main back piece down. This is meant to create a casing for inserting the internal flex frame. And this took a while because I don't know, I wasn't thinking straight, I guess. But anyway, it took a while because I wanted to make sure that I could sew everything together with one row of straight stitches. And then I spent more time wrestling with the back frame, trying to get it into the casing. I was so close to ripping the fabric apart that I went back to read the instructions on the packaging and realized, oh, I was meant to add tape to the metal bits of the frame to help with the insertion process. And so I did get the back frame in and added the final nail to the coffin. I guess I would use that saying or that phrase here because that pretty much sealed the deal and I couldn't make any more changes to the work after that. I'm not sure if you got it by now, but I'm just not happy with how everything has turned out. This black satin fabric was still fraying even after I finished the raw edges with zigzag stitches and I had to trim the fraying bits right after I attached the back frame. This is definitely not my best work. So after attaching the back frame, I realized that I forgot to add loops for attaching a back chain in the casing. I wanted the loops to be sewn in the casing so the loops won't be showing on the outside of the bag. But since I forgot to do that, I decided to add little ribbon loops and hand sew them on the side openings of the back frame instead. Well, so I started off this project thinking that it would be an easy breezy palette cleanser for myself but it ended up being quite a bit more stressful than I anticipated. I think first of all design wise, the magnetic internal flex frame um, just isn't meant for a purse like this. I've seen it used in little coin pouches and also something like a pouch for sunglasses but I guess it's just not really meant to be um, for something deeper and bigger. It's just not as functional. And secondly, which is a thing that I've been trying to work on is being more organized in my thinking and my sewing. I thought I did sit down and thought it through already, but I guess it just wasn't enough and that's going to be something that I need to continue to work on. But I guess at the end of the day, I did put together something that I can use. I can put a little phone, although it's going to be a little tricky for me to put my hand into it. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how much use I get out of it. So yeah, if you've made mistakes in your sewing recently, share it with me and everyone in the comments so we can continue to encourage each other in our making journey. And if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. So it would help encourage me to keep making stuff here as well because a lot of times I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!